Let's work out an example of an improper integral. Say we want to find what is the integral between 1 and infinity of natural log of x divided by x squared dx. This integral is an improper integral since we have one of the bounds to go to infinity. In order to work these ones out, what we need to do is we need to apply the definition of an improper integral, which means we need to replace the upper limit the upper limit as a limit of t tends to infinity. In other words, this becomes the integral between 1 and t of natural log of x divided by x squared dx. In order to compute this limit, now we need to find the antiderivative of the expression we have over there. In other words, we need to compute the limit of the natural, sorry, the integral of the natural log of x divided by x squared dx. So we can start this one by doing a u substitution. We can set u to be natural log of x and then du equals 1 over x dx. We can see that we can apply this substitution in here uh, in the following way. We can rewrite this as natural log of x divided by x times dx divided by x. So this part is exactly du. This part right here, it's exactly u. We just need to rewrite this x, which we can do following the u substitution. From the original substitution, we can have that x equals e to the u. So taking everything into account, we can rewrite this integral as the integral of u divided by e to the u du. So then what we have is the following. We have that this is the same thing as the integral of u e to the negative u du. So we can work out this one using integration by parts. If we set um, this part right here to be our dv. And this part, I'm not going to call it u, I'm going to call it w, so we have a difference. Then we can write down this using the integration by parts formula. In this case, it would read w times v minus the integral of v dw, where dw is just the same thing as du, and v will become e to the negative u divided by negative 1. So that will give me the integral to be w times v, that will give me minus u e to the negative u, minus the integral of v dw, which should be plus e to the negative u du. So this integral we can work out. This is just the integral of uh, an exponential, will, which will give me minus u e to the negative u minus e to the negative u plus a constant. So now we can go back in terms of our original variable, again, using the original u substitution that we had over here. So this becomes minus u, which was the same thing as natural log of x, times e to the negative u, which is e to the minus natural log of x, minus e to the negative u, which is e to the negative natural log of x, plus constant. So we can simplify this out. Uh, this becomes minus natural log of x times x to the negative first power. So the exponential and the logarithm cancel. Then we're left just with uh, a negative one power over there. Minus, and same thing happens with this one, it will be x to the negative first power plus a constant. So if we put everything together, this becomes minus natural log of x plus one divided by x plus a constant. So this is the antiderivative of the expression we were looking for. So now we can go back and write down the limit, the original limit that we have in here. So substituting this expression, we get 
that the integral between 1 to infinity of the natural log of x divided by x squared dx is the same thing as the limit as t tends to infinity of the expression that we just found, which was negative natural log of x plus 1 divided by x between 1 and t. So I'm just substituting the antiderivative with the expression that we have. Now this becomes the limit as t tends to infinity of everything at t minus everything at 1. So negative natural log of t plus 1 divided by t minus everything at 1, which would be net, the natural log of 1 plus 1 divided by 1. So everything at t minus everything at 1. Then this can be simplified as the limit t tends to infinity of... We can work this one out in here by noticing that the natural log of 1 is 0. So this gives us a total of 1 minus the natural log of t plus 1 divided by t. Now we have the limit of a number. It's just the number itself. So this one is straightforward. But this one over here, we have a more uh, complicated expression because we have the natural log of t divided by t as t tends to infinity. Now, this one is of the form infinity over infinity. And you might remember that for this, we would need to use L'Hopital's rule. So in order to use L'Hopital's rule, what we need to do is we need to take the derivative of the top and the derivative of the bottom. So using L'Hopital's rule, this will give us, well, the first part is just the 1, so we can just copy. 1 minus the, the limit as t tends to infinity of natural log of t plus 1 divided by t. And this, using L'Hopital's rule, becomes 1 minus the limit as t tends to infinity of the derivative of the top, which is 1 over t, divided by the derivative of the bottom, which is just 1. So this limit now is uh, much better because we just have the limit of 1 over t divided by 1. And whenever t tends to infinity, this whole thing tends to 0. So we have that the overall limit is just the initial one that we have, and that will be the entire integral. So what we did was we first work out the antiderivative of the original expression, this part right here. We did a u substitution and then integration by parts. And once we found that antiderivative, we substituted into the definition of an improper integral, which means finding a limit for that expression. After doing this, in this particular case, we arrive with an undeterminate expression, this part, natural log of t plus 1 divided by t, which is infinity over infinity. And this is one of the cases in which we can use L'Hopital's rule. The end, in the end, we have that the integral is equal to 1.